All right, what are we going to do this morning, Amanda? We're going to go to Chateau d'If, which is featured in the Count of Monte Cristo. Cool, how are we getting there? We're going to take the ferry to the island, which is a little bit away from Marseille. Cool, so we, where do we pick up that ferry? At the Old Port. The Old Port, okay, cool, let's go. You can take your kids for a ride with that bike. You can get like at least two or three kids on the back of that. Yes, we're not in this especially super awesome street, but we're like one block away from super awesome streets, so it's not a bad place to be. We're just on the uh, south side of the port, about a, a block off the main harbor. Just have to go by all this pleasant traffic every day. It's a modern galley, the boat repair shop. We made the boat barely with a minute to spare. <laughs> this is uh, Napoleon III's palace that uh, he built here in uh, Marseille, but uh, it died before it was completed, never got to stay in it. Now it's a conference center that was donated to the city. That's a super fun bus trip. Okay, first stop, cafe, maybe. They're open. Okay, got my coffee now, so the morning is good. It can start. The seagulls are dive bombing you the whole way as you walk around. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's it's terrible. Very, very not fun. If you don't like birds, don't come here. <laughs> Built in 1529 on the orders of Francois I, the Chateau d'If was Marseille's first royal fortress. Its role was to protect one of the kingdom's main trade ports where the fleet of royal galleys was anchored and to watch over Marseille, which had been part of France since 1480. In 1591, the city refused to recognize King Henry IV because he was a Protestant. The governor of Yves, who was faithful to the king, had an enclosure built with the help of Florentine troops. This enclosure was raised by Henry IV's military engineer in 1604 and again by Vauban in 1701. Perched atop a limestone island, the square fortress is flanked by three towers with gun embrasures, St. Christophe, St. Jean, and Magovert. The chateau became a state prison in 1580, and many prisoners of war and political prisoners were incarcerated there until the early 20th century. The most famous is the fictional character in Alexandre Dumas's The Count of Monte Cristo. In the book, the young hero from Marseille, Edmond Dantes, is falsely accused by a jealous colleague and sentenced to many years in prison at Chateau d'If. The story tells of the relationship that develops with Abbe Faria, who meets Edmond after mistakenly digging an escape tunnel into the next cell. Faria mentors Edmund and tells him of a great treasure on the island of Monte Cristo, which Edmund could use to take his revenge on his accusers. It is a story of escape, intrigue, and heroism, and the modern Chateau d'If takes full advantage. Mm. We're seeing ourselves locked up in prison. There we are. That's very funny. Help, let us out. That was it, the room of the Count of Monte Cristo. They've even dug their own tunnel between cells. The, the hole that goes down into the uh, dungeon. It's Gerard Depardieu. Maybe he's the Count of Monte Cristo. It is believed that the novel is based on a real story found in the archives of the Paris police. Okay, onward and upward. It's like some kind of cistern here. 
catches the water off the roof there and then goes down into this channel. The keep or St. Christoph Tower is accessible from the terraces via a very large door to enable the artillery to pass through. So that's the big door right there where cannon could be pulled into the into the room and then all these doors are where they could shoot out. A spiral staircase leads to the terrace overlooking the entire site from a height of 42 meters. It's crazy if you stand in the middle of this courtyard it's echoing all around from all sides. It's weird. To the south, the keep overlooks the extremity of Pomeg and Rateno Islands, which also had cannon towers built after 1610 to guard the passage. Are the seagulls pecking you on the head. Down there. See if he dive bombs them. You know, I never thought noose horn would be such a valuable word to learn. So thank you, Duolingo. It is said that in 1513, a rhinoceros, an animal previously unknown in Europe, given to Pope Leo X by the King of Portugal, made a stopover on the island. I'm actually not sure what it is in, in French. Unfortunately, the rhinoceros died in a shipwreck. Le tale tragique de la rhinoceros. Okay, this is the death row dungeon. It's right near the staircase so they can quick make a quick run up to the gallows I guess or if they push them off it's the cleaver room the insular location and architecture of the chateau made escape impossible cramped living conditions and a lack of hygiene left little chance of survival however certain prisoners paid one pistol per day to rent a private room well, a pistol is a coin and by extension the name of a rented cell. So it's just a, a rented cell that you rent at a prison rather than just get thrown in. A, the free ones, I guess, are bad. This is a lot bigger room. I think this is one of the pistols. So the like chimney is here and then uh, just would have been a big room. Maybe you'd, this is like the high rent district. In 1580, the knight Anselm, accused of plotting against the monarchy, was one of the first prisoners to be incarcerated. Got the beautiful fighter place here. And he has the uh, little a spare bedroom. So here's a two bedroom and he's got that uh, room that looks out onto the ocean. This is the room of the uh, man in the iron mask. He actually has maid service here. So they're working on his room right now. I'm gonna go, they said I could come in. Man in the Iron Mask must have been very important. He has two huge rooms and one under this tower with lots of windows, lots of space. So important that you couldn't tell, you couldn't know who he was. Or else it could have, the whole kingdom could have fallen. This is the mechanism that used to operate the porticolis down on there like a big wheel and axle. Gabriel Ricchetti, Comte de Mirabeau, so the room where the Count of Mirabeau would stay, and another big one. So this is, yeah, definitely the second floor. These are the high-rent prison apartments here. Mirabeau, a member of the future revolutionary tribunat, was imprisoned at Eve by letter de cachet. It's a letter with the king's seal containing the order to imprison or exile an individual without a trial. Here he wrote his essay on despotism. A single room with a fireplace and a shelf and one window looking out into the courtyard, no sea views. After the promulgation of the Edict of Fontainebleau in 1685, Protestants were imprisoned here. In the space of two centuries, 3,500 Protestants were crammed in, some dying here, others ending up in chains on the galleys of Marseille. Jean Valjean. This is awesome. This is like walking through Minecraft. I love this. <laughs> Opponents of the regime were also imprisoned at Eve. There are inscriptions in the courtyard made by revolutionaries of 1848 
Their quality indicates the presence of professional stonemasons acting under the control of the garrison. In 1852, 304 Republicans, opponents of Napoleon III, waited here to be deported to labor camp. In 1871, it was the turn of the insurgents from the Marseille Uprising. The last prisoners were Germans during the First World War. Double locked in here. But that's not a very thick door, but double locks there. The island and castle were great, but I have to admit I got excited a few times about people who had been in prison there, like the man in the iron mask, and got like very excited and pumped that I was seeing the cell, only to find out later that that was just put on for the castle. He wasn't really there, or um, all of the uh, Count of Monte Cristo stuff. It was more fictional than, than things that actually happened, but it still made for a, a good tour. And that doesn't take anything away from the real people who died here for uh, liberty or for their beliefs. Here's all the old school displays hidden away and where the vending machines are. Old model of the fort, the old signs. <laughs> the back scenes look. Well, there you have it. Castle de Gif. Can't quite stay there. The bus is here. Taking the uh, city boat, it's uh, for like 11 euros and 10 cents. You can get a ride out to Chateau d'If and then ride around all the other islands too. I don't know if you can get on and off. You might have to pay to do that, but at least you can get the boat ride. It's like the best deal in Marseille. What island is this? Any idea? Oh, Friol? In Friol. The Friol. Oh, that's exactly what you said. It looks fun but touristy. All new buildings and they have their own Greek temple folly there and gelato and all the rest. Okay, that was super fun to ride the boat with those uh, really crazy people from uh, Brazil. Really fun. There is some crazy funky smell going on on this what is this part of the pier? I guess this is the western part of the pier uh, where all the fish market is. They must wash all their fish guts into that drain and it, oh god, it reeks. That's why there's nobody hanging out right over there. There you go, Marseille, beautiful church, wonderful graffiti, and a shotgun. If you like this video and want to support my bad habit of visiting cool castles in France, click the thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks.